decade since the enthronement of Kabaka Ronald Mwenda Mutebi II. Due to unusual circumstances, King Ronald Mwenda Mutebi II addressed the gathering via a pre-recorded video at the uh, uh, Anglican Church of Uganda's Provico, uh, Provincial Cathedral at St. Paul's Cathedral in Namirembe. Now, the occasion attracted over 1,000 guests to the cathedral for a rare indoor ceremony. We're going to be beginning with this big story right now. By 7 a.m. amid the cloudy weather, roads leading to Namirembe Cathedral were flooded with Kabaka subjects making their way to witness the commemoration of the 31st coronation of Kabaka Ronald Mwenda Mtebi II. Security, both covert and overt, from different security agencies were extensively deployed to ensure peace before, during and after the event. School children from various schools were also in attendance. A cocktail of entertainment from dances, poems and plays entertained guests both inside and outside the cathedral. At 3 p.m., dignitaries started arriving led by the retired Katik Romulwanya Mulise Mogere and others from the central government. <laughs> Dr. Stephen Kazimba Mugaru led religious leaders from the Anglican domination, while others from the Catholic, Adventist, Islam, and Orthodox were also present. <laughs> In his preaching, he thanked the Lord for the life of the Kabaka and for enabling him to lead Buganda Kingdom for this long. <laughs> Bishop Banja preached against selling land and thus emphasized the importance of planting trees in the changing climate. <laughs> He condemned the misuse of internet and those who defame others by speaking ill and using abusive language. The royal family, led by Nalinya Nabaloga, cut the cake on behalf of the Kabaka, who was not physically present at the commemorations. John William Ogenda, Israel Kawye for BTM News Today. Now, Uganda Kingdom has today marked 31 years since the coronation of King Kabaka Ronald Mwenda Mutebi II, with the monarch remotely addressing the unusual gathering at the iconic provincial cathedral of the Anglican Church of Uganda through a pre recorded video. Now, during his address, Kabaka urged the subjects to be careful with the people who pretend to love Buganda uh, with ill intentions to bring it down. Now, he delivered his coronation message at his royal palace in Banda. Let's see this. Oktuka Kuruna Kuruno Kutujukida No Kujaguza Amatikiraga Kabaka Agom Rundi Uwamakumia Sasumogumu Treba Zakatonda Uloburam Watua Day No Bujanjabi Putufunye Okfna Munsi Ezenja Ulo Trevor Zabasao, Robu Janjavi, 
Atera, nga wacha atu janjava. We wawo, obulamu wafe, we yonge doktera, na ye orembeira, nevi lagirobi hawa sao. Tetusobode, kubega tako, nga we guvera bulijo. Tuweba zomu na bilizi wena mirembe, Moses Banja, Dean Walutiko, na haba kwele zavo na, haba kule mbedemu wa kusawa kuno. Ne wanku bade, tetu bade uo, nga tulie welu mkujia njabibwa, ebi intubio na, ebi bade uo, Tubadde tukigobele la bulunji. Olugero, olugamba, nti enkuba elio kanga neto nya. Netulaba nsisi za uzenkanya emioyo. Olugero olo, lutu ukili de. Bulijo, tubakutila okwegata, okukuma, no kusechi tiwa munono nempisa zafe. Wano umrabe wa inzo kuita singa tuga ya alirile nsonga zino. Abata kabe nkizo bama nyidwa bulu unji na bobe manyi elaba manyi no bufunanyi zi wabu wabwe. Nsonga yoku bini Kabaka alamuro wa kabaka ngayambi wako katikilo. Ye kabaka ye njini guwaba ye ronde de era kabaka taba na msigire. Nsonge yoku satu. Munono zafe kabaka aline dembe okuteka o obo kudibia empisa ezimu okusinzi la kumule embe ngawe gubeda. Tuweba zaba ntubo na nukusingila daraba vubukaba fe. Abubo na abali ya mitala wa mayanja. Uruo mkwano nubu ulize elina mlondo. Chisani de omkwano uguo gukumibwe. Elagula giwe. Nga mulimu empisa nubu ntubulamu. Nga wechima nyidwa okuveda nedda. Cathedral Charles Peter Maiga has reaffirmed the stance against the forces seeking to create division among the Baganda. Now, during the 31st coronation anniversary of the Kabaka Ronald Wenda Mutebi II, themed our unity is the strength of the king. Maiga reiterated his condemnation of the individuals and the groups attempting to uh, rather to undermine Buganda's unity. Let's have this story. Speaking at the commemoration, Charles Peter Maiga emphasized that unity is a formidable force, saying it is difficult to divide many united people. Omubala woku jukila matikila woku omuru ndi obwasa tumo obumu gufu ganti obumu wafi gemanyi gamna murondo. Mumiaka asatu mugumu ngamna mumsu ala mula ye mwene no Uganda bwonna buse mu bizibu ne bisomoze biweraku ebika ebyatule mu byali byawufu neto wali chasu kulumizibwa kubilala ne bike byajjo ruvanyuma ne byegatta ku Buganda ne byegatta ku Baganda abasoka na byo byenkana nkana ne binansa ngwa Maiga also reaffirmed stance against forces seeking to create division among the people of Uganda. Chokanga teje zuvugan, ntiyabalo, tevam na yagala vena kore mirimu, obo kweta wakumikuru, okutu usanga asuki dedala. Manyu, obuganda budine nyonta, okulaba kumutanda. Chokamba sava, Tugeba kumikiriza. Tusoso waze ensongezi kwa atakugula mungwe. According to Maiga, the king was actively following church proceedings 
from a palace and, and presiding over his roles as Buganda's prime leader. Now let's still move on this evening. The Kampala City Traders Association, Kasita, has rallied all traders across the country to join them in a sit-down strike that has actually commenced earlier on today. To protest the postponement of the scheduled meeting with the president, Yoweri Kaguta Museveni, that was initially scheduled to take place today at Kololo. However, it was pushed to a further date in August. Now, according to Issa Sejito, the Casita spokesperson, he asserts that uh, since the protest was unexpected, there are rising awareness among the business community to see that all the traders across the country joined the cause. Recently, the Kampala minister, Aisha Kabanda, said that the president advised that the meeting cannot be held at Kololo Independence Grounds uh, due to the ongoing renovation works. We have more. Some of this you see happening in the field as you have seen it is the rebellion. Some organizations that have emerged within the business community have made announcements that are disputable. Casita has also made her own. Even you see that even some of the instances in Casita, some people don't know what is happening. This is the rebellion because uh, it, it came all of a sudden. We are anticipating and waiting to meet the pre president come today. And the minister, through a, 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 an SMS voice, communicated to us that uh, the president will find a, a date in the future in August and talk to the business people. The business people were not so amused by this. Uh, first of all, it was a sign of disrespect, according to the business people. Secondly, the minister that announced it uh, is not very uh, known to handle issues the way uh, diplomacy requires. And uh, so people thought that there, were, there would be a better way, whether through the means of trade industry and cooperatives, whether through the means of finance, because this is a national matter. It's not a concern of Kampala traders only. It is a nationwide problem. That's why you hear that some people in Iganga are closed. Some people in Mitiana, I have received the reliable information that they have closed. Just because the issues of taxation, the issues of small traders, uh, of the petty, of, of, of foreign traders who are in small, small businesses affect the entire country and also the levying of taxes in kilos for governments has been an, uh, an uh, ongoing challenge that the government is not resolving. These issues are national issues, not issues of a Kampala minister. The president had better ways of communicating to us, whether through the national media, whether through uh, the, his official Twitter handles, whether through the PPSs that he has, something formal that would come down the traders who are so ready to meet the president. So in, now that that is gone, there are of course state agents among us, the business people. There are those who <coughs> can't close because the funding in some way comes from the government officials or from government itself. He who pays for the piper dictates the tune. If I give you money, then it means I will command you whether rain or sunshine, you will go to work. We can't avoid this. But in, 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 in general, we think the principle is we agreed to close and we have not agreed for how long this is going to take. So this is day one. We hope we are removing every challenge that has been raised by these business people. They are genuine concerns. We are trying to address them so that come second of the peaceful demonstration, we shall convince them all to join.
responded to the traders protest now police is saying that uh, the general public especially the traders should remain calm amidst the ongoing sit-down strike by traders in the protest of the postponement of their meeting with the president jorika gutam Sebeni. now according to the police spokesperson uh, spa cp rusokic to traders who are set to disregard the sit-down strike and continue opening their shops uh, will be given security by the uganda police force According to the statement issued by SCP Rusoke, the move is intended to maintain safety and uh, peace in the central business district as some of the traders have shut down their shops to the others operating normally. Let's have a look at this story. Uh, Uganda Police Force assures traders of security. We are keenly monitoring activities within the business community in light of the recent postponement of the meeting between traders and His Excellency, the President, we have observed that some traders operating in the central business district of Kampala have opted to close their shops in protest, while others continue operating as usual. We encourage all traders to remain calm as they await the appropriate time for meeting with His Excellency the President. We wish to reassure traders to keep their businesses open. The Uganda Police Force is resolutely committed to providing them with protection and security. I thank you. Now let's move on now. This evening, Uganda seems to be making a great stride in having the railway constructed from Mombasa to Uganda, which would be a very big step. Now, the government has so far acquired about 50% of the land required to construct the standard gauge railway from Mombasa to Uganda through Malaba towards River Nile. According to the State Minister for ICT, Godfrey Kawianga, the compensation of the affected people is underway. Kawianga was addressing journalists at the Uganda Media Centre earlier on. And a reporter was right there. He reports now. In 2015, Uganda agreed with Chinese firm China Harbor and Engineering Company Limited Check to implement the project on condition the firm helped secure funds for the railway from the Chinese government. After years of fruitless talks with the Chinese on the funds, however, Uganda early last year terminated the agreement and instead commenced negotiations with Yapi Makese to undertake the project. Yapi Makese has now been selected for the project. We signed with a Chinese company and the financing was supposed to come from Exim Bank, but the conditions of Exim Bank became a bit unfavorable to us. We are still in negotiations, but the conditions they gave us became a bit unfavorable and we decided to, and that's why actually we delayed. Uh, so at a certain point, we thought it was not uh, viable to go with their conditions and that's why we looked for another financier, another, another contractor. Land acquisition is now at 50% and preparations to pay the affected people are underway. We've got three activities that go on in the development of uh, Standard Gate Railway. We've got uh, the land acquisition because we've got to acquire a corridor where this rail line must pass. So there is land acquisition. And then when the land is acquired or being acquired, there is acquiring um, or procuring uh, a contractor. That is two. And then there is also uh, mobilizing financing. Those are the three. So far, in acquisition of the land, I would say in summary we have done um, over 50% of the land has been acquired. Over 50%. Moving from Malaba towards uh, the River Nile. Uganda is still sourcing funds to commence the construction works. With the, different, with the more favorable conditions, uh, and, and that's where we are. 
But the, uh, just as we have told you, the contractor will assist us to look for financing, but eventually we are the ones who are going to pay. We, are go we can get a loan, but the whole issue is still Uganda will pay. And we shall get the money from what we generate. That 2.2 billion US dollar standard gauge railway will commence on a welcome development for importers and exporters in the landlocked country that had long endured sky-high transport costs. The 273-kilometer line will head from Uganda's capital Kampala to the country's border with Kenya, where it is expected to link with Kenya's own standard gauge railway line that connects to the Indian Ocean seaport of Mombasa. Uganda is banking on the railway to boost the speed and lower the cost of transportation exports such as coffee and tobacco. It currently relies on costly and slow road links and a century-old narrow gauge layer line built by former colonial power Britain. The Sanad Gorge Railway project was launched in 2013. Just Finimote Sikim, BTM News today. Now, the Standards, Utilities and Wildlife Court has sentenced seven Chinese investors to a four-year jail term for drilling the wetlands. Now, these have been ordered to pay about 31 million shillings or serve a four-year jail term. Those convicted are Liang Cheng Wu and uh, Cheng Zhang Hu, Dong, Cheng, Dong uh, Chu Ji, and uh, many others. Let's have a look at this. The court, presided over by Chief Magistrate Gladys Kamasanyu, heard that the group and others still at large on 8th July 2024 at Kamhunga Village, Magezi Kazungu Parish, Lukayatan Council, Kalongu District, disturbed well uh, wetland by drilling it in a manner that is likely to destroy it. They were convicted following their plea of guilty. They have been ordered to pay 31 million shillings or serve a four-year jail term. During the hearing, the prosecution amended the charge sheet to include an additional count of conspiracy to drill Rela Wheatland and added Double Q Company Limited as a defendant. The accused initially denied the charges, claiming they were tourists but later admitted to the offences because they did not have a licence to conduct mining activities in the wetland. Now, the expert that they are talking about who got this report visited the place. He took these photos, there are many photos here on the report. I have also seen your faces in the report. For you, we are charged with those two offenses. Is that what happened? Okay, so I've written that you have to the charge, right? The prosecution, led by Judith Nyamuiza, requested a deterrent sentence. She highlighted the impact of the investors' actions on the environment and dependent residents. And the side effects are being felt by each individual as part of this investment. Wetland degradation disrupts the balance of the wetland ecosystem. The defense team, led by Grace Biarhanga, asked for a lenient sentence, noting that the convicts had not wasted the court's time. She has no, no right to Secondly, the the convicts have not wasted time, as well as the resources of the state. In running the process of prosecution, <coughs> production of witnesses, and the entire rigorous process of, <coughs> of 
processing the required evidence. Tailored to that motion, the convicts, this is seen from their opening statements as they were pleading guilty. Investors were arrested on July 8, 2024 by the National Environment Management Authority, NEMA, and Environment Police for drilling the wetland in a manner that is likely to destroy it and failure to comply with environmental laws. They were reportedly found with over 10 gray darts and other equipment used for drilling. The incident follows last year's collapse of the Rela Bridge, allegedly due to drilling activities by Chinese investors. About two weeks ago, the same court found Kelim Ray, a Turkish national and the director of Yemeni Construction Limited, guilty of similar charges. He was accused of violating environmental laws by encroaching upon the depositing maram in the Rajali wetland in Mkono, Uganda. He was accordingly sentenced to pay a fine of 200 million shillings or five years in default. Kamasanyu further ordered Kareem Ray to restore the Rajali wetland within 30 days from the date of his conviction under the inspection of the National Environment Management Authority, NEMA. Josephine Mutesi Kim, BTM News today. Actually, my producer also advised me that uh, those trainees included also Zi Gongzu and uh, Wang Penchuan. Yeah. Okay. Now let's move on and see about education and how Mr. Biamuka Mahenry is revolutionizing education. In a bid to boost education in the country by reducing school dropout rates and sustainable impact alliance, uh, there, there is a program now called SAS Uganda, which is set to launch a multidisciplinary uh, platform dubbed the Reward for Education. Now, rewards for education earn a student scholarship points for earning and can be redeemed uh, for rewards, aiding college readiness and also financial support. Now, according to Dr. Henry Biamukama, the CEO of SAS Uganda, the platform will award points to a child for every attendance at school while keeping track of her educational progress. Let's have this. School dropout rates in Uganda over the years have been significantly increasing, with about 45% of primary school children and 30% of secondary school children dropping out before completing their education. Several factors have been attributed to the dropout rates, but major researchers have found out that, to some extent, students are distracted and a lack of source of motivation to stay in school. Realizing the existing gap, Sustainable Impact Alliance Solution CS Uganda has initiated an integrative digital platform to address the long-standing complex issues in society. The digital platform includes rewards for education where children earn points for each day they attend school. Our approach is multidisciplinary. That is, yes, it's multidisciplinary to implement innovative projects that tackle the complexities in our society. And that is why we came up under CS, we came up with the rewards for education. According to Dr. Henry Biamukama, the CEO of CS Uganda, this is aimed at motivating children to stay in school and track a child's journey throughout education. The rewards for education is that you incentivize yeah, the child based on the reward. For example, if the child goes to school for three days, he accumulates points, he wins something, say a ball, say a shoe. If he goes to school for a month, he wins a bigger reward. If he goes to school for three years, and he can track himself that at this point he has accumulated a reward, this kind of reward, and he's motivated for the next reward. This is this has proven, and this is research based, it has proven to be more successful to motivate a child to go to school than performance reward. Attendance reward is more has proven to be more successful than than performance reward. Attendance better than performance reward. So it is basically to incentivize the student and even the parent because even the parent has a reward to incentivize the for example if the parent knows that my kid if he goes to school for one term he wins a trip to dubai from say emirates or from qatar or whatever yeah he will motivate the child to go to school the parent is motivated the kid is motivated in that way you are dealing with the dropout the school dropout already you are tackling that issue the platform also provides a blockchain-based safe space 
called the Doc Locker for one to keep his or her documents. Dr. Biamkama expounds that one can have access to his or her Doc Locker with or without internet. You just open, it's like a safe. You just open, uh, you have a username, you have a password, and then you access your, your documents. They are safe because they are blockchain based. Yeah, can't be hacked, they are secure. You can still access your documents even when you are offline from wherever you are. Yes, we have that uh, facility too. Acknowledging the significant relevance of such an approach in materializing Sustainable Development Goal 9, which emphasizes increased access to information and communication technology, he says the platform intends to create a merit-based society, mitigating challenges like corruption, bureaucracy, and fraud, among others. For example, fraud and bureaucracy. Technology removes fraud and removes bureaucracy and also creates a platform for, for merit-based society. So fraud is dealt with, corruption is dealt with, inefficiency is dealt with, bureaucracy is dealt with, and then you create a platform for a merit-based society that you get, what you, you get where you are, you do something based on merit. Technology is not complicated, it is daily life, yeah daily life. Uh, performance and effectiveness is so much data, data centered. I mean, you can, we cannot be effective in anything we do if we don't have data. If we don't have statistics, we don't have figures, we don't have adequate research, we cannot be effective. You can't begin a business if you are not, if you don't have the background research. You cannot uh, be a professional if you don't have the statistics and the data. Statistics, data, and the storage of this data and the usage of this data creates effectiveness ultimately. Dr. Biamkama also asserts that the project rollout will commence with areas with internet access as they work with the government to increase internet access in remote parts of the country. The trend is digitalized. We're not going to run away from it. It is a, a long-term project starting small is going to evolve of course there has to be one of the the plans for the government is to have internet accessed in every part of the country but for us at the beginning of course we're going to have to emphasize areas that have internet already yeah and as we work with the government to reach out Uganda is not a big big area it's very easy to, to put it in Uganda, it's, very, the, the, it's not a big space. The Minister of State for ICT, Godfrey Kabianga Baluku, welcomed the idea and commended Dr. Biamkama for the initiative, which resonates with the changing education system. Therefore, it will depend on whether the teacher is competent enough to record everything. Right, right. I think even attendance of the child. But now I think the past is coming up with a, a good app, yeah. which can really track all that. Yeah. You just need to input, uh, input all those uh, uh, parameters, and at the end of the day, you download. Right. At the end of the term, and then you make. It. Actually, the system can even make an assessment. Yes. But I think mm -hmm. out of twenty, mm -hmm. this child, according to this, he has fifteen. The minister expressed government's commitment to increase internet access in remote areas, as well as cutting internet prices. For internet. Uh, internet prices lower. Yes. We shall ensure uh, <coughs> gadgets, equipment used uh, in, in IT, mm -hmm. probably prices lower. Mm -hmm. and, and the rest now will remain to the so private sector. I appreciate uh, the Commissioner and the Honorable Minister. They have been very, very cooperative, very, very helpful, and they have shown that they have the mind for Uganda to transform. So uh, this process has taken some time. It's taken us five years to get to where we are, getting the partnerships and getting the funding and engaging the stakeholders. But special thanks to Commissioner Watasa and Honorable Minister Kavian. Thank you very much. As Uganda grapples with dropout rates in schools across the country and on how to mitigate the vice, the introduction of rewards for education sheds light at the end of the tunnel. John William Ogenda, Freddie Christie Sao for BTM News Today.
attend school three days, you can win a sneaker. If he attends a month, he can win this five. Well, who do we have BTM Health coming up next? Well, in today's BTM Health, we're going to be taking a look at some of the health benefits of sugar cane. Let's have a look at this. A hot summer season and chilled sugarcane juice are an excellent combination to enjoy a hot afternoon. This delicious sugarcane juice is not only relishing but also nourishing. It is considered healthy according to traditional Indian medicine. It does not mean pure sugar but it contains water, fibers and some amount of sucrose. People with diabetes and pre-diabetes should not consume sugarcane juice as this can cause a sudden spike in blood sugar levels. For non-diabetic, it may be a healthy alternative to artificially flavored beverages. Sugarcane scientifically known as Sacrum officina from the Poissy family Sugarcane is a natural source of sucrose, that is, that is the powerhouse of our energy. It normalizes the release of glucose in the body to regain lost sugar levels. Sugarcane juice hydrates your body and reduces your fatigue caused due to hot weather. This juice provides you with carbohydrates, proteins, and minerals that help you to deal with your dryness. Sugarcane juice has an excellent diuretic properties that help to eliminate toxins and infections from your body. Drinking sugarcane juice may help people dealing with urinary tract infections and kidney Tones. Mix some coconut water and lemon in the sugarcane juice and drink this with a mixture two times a day to get relief from burning sensations. For digestive stress, sugarcane juice works as digestive tonic. It is high in potassium that balances the pH levels in the stomach. Sugarcane juice facilitates the secretion of digestive juices and keep the system on track. Sugarcane also contains a good amount of fibers that help clear the digestive tract and may reduce constipation. If you are looking for a remedy for anti-aging and fine skin lines, Sugarcane may be the hell. It contains antioxidants, phenolic acid, and flavonoids. It helps in moisturizing the skin and making it soft and glowing from inside. Glycolic acid in sugarcane helps to maintain the radiance of the skin too. Sugarcane is a good source of vitamin C and antioxidants that may boost our immunity. Presence of flavonoids may help the body to stave off cancerous cells, especially prostate and breast cancer. Sugarcane juice works excellent for some digestive and liver problems. Sugarcane is rich in nutrients that are essential during pregnancy, such as folic acid, vitamin B complex, antioxidants, and calcium. It can be a healthy alternative packed with juices and artificially flavored beverages. Talk to your doctor before consuming anything new during pregnancy. Women with diabetes or at risk of diabetes should strictly avoid sugarcane juice, such as peanut butter in babies. Mm -hmm. Women with diabetes or at risk of diabetes should strictly avoid sugarcane juice. High fever presents with a lot of weaknesses and body pains. Sugarcane juice helps to replenish the loss of water and glucose and makes your recovery rapid. BTM Health for BTM News today. So we're going to go for a very short break, but when we return, we still have more news for you, including this. Still to come, UNEB's Jennifer Kaulema Samba, the spokesperson, clarifies on the body's registration deadline. We are going to do the data cleaning. After data cleaning, we shall have the schools display the registers of all... And also Eastern Sudan's Kasala province is flooding. The floods have affected and displaced people. When we return, that and more.
Discover delicacy at Cafe Atu, your all-in-one destination. Whether it's the perfect cup of coffee or a satisfying meal, we got you covered. Indulge your cravings with our mouth-watering pilau, savory katogo, crispy chips, and tender chicken. Explore our world of cocktails and fresh juices for a truly special treat. Planning an event? Choose Cafe Atu for top-notch outside catering services. Benefit from ample parking? Stay connected with Wi-Fi and catch your favorite matches on DSTV. Cafe Atu offers food deliveries in and around Kampala. Hosting a conference, our center accommodates up to 1,000 people. Need a boardroom for a party or corporate meeting? We've got just the spot for you. We offer a free venue for birthdays and baby showers, providing complimentary photography. For those aspiring to become professional barristers, our barrister school awaits you. Visit us at Albany Center, Level 2 on Ginger Road. Cafe Atu, where every occasion becomes a memorable experience. Good evening and you're very welcome back. Thank you so much for staying with us. You're still watching BTM News today. My name is Paul Collins. We are continuing to move on and uh, see about the school now. Today marks the deadline for registration for all candidates at different levels and according to the Uganda National Examinations Board. A letter from the Examinations Board dated 29th July is later stated that uh, the registration will end this week on 31st July. Jennifer Kaule Masamba, the body's spokesperson, clarifies more on this. Latest phase of registration for the candidates for all the four levels of the examinations. And uh, we're talking about the primary examinations for PLE, we're talking about that is for P7 candidates, we're talking about the UCE examination that is for both the senior four uh, candidates who are doing the old curriculum at the transition examination and the senior four candidates who are registering for the new curriculum examination, as well as the USC examination for the senior six candidates. And um, today we are finally marking the registration, closing the registration. What this basically means is that after midnight tonight, we will not be receiving any data regarding candidates' registration. So in terms of next steps as a board, we are going to be doing the data, data cleaning and uh, we also request that the heads of centers send us the albums. Okay, today is also a deadline for the submission of the albums for the candidates. After today, we are not going to receive any data regarding the candidates. And then we are after this, we are going to do the data cleaning. After data cleaning, we shall have the schools display the registers of all the candidates. And this is where we are going to need the parents to come in, even the candidates themselves, to confirm if they have actually been registered. So after the data cleaning, 60 days before the examinations, as it is stated in the NEP Act 2021, all schools are required to display the registers of candidates and we require we shall um, expect the parents and the candidates to go and confirm their registration status and confirm the, uh, the order of names, confirm the correctness of the data which has been submitted, the date of birth, the spelling of names, the order of names, the subjects which you registered for, in, uh, like in the case of the, the senior four candidates and the senior six candidates and the papers that you have registered for. And in case you need to make any amendments, we shall request that you do come in, uh, in, um, you do let inform us at your name, so we can be able to make the amendments. In the meantime, in case you realize that there is a mistake in the data that has been submitted, you can go onto the portal. There is an amendment form, so download the amendment form, indicate what the mistake is, and then indicate what the amendment should be like and then submit. For primary, you submit to the EREG primary at your name at SOTUG. And then for secondary, you submit to EREG secondary at your name with SC.UG and shall be able to make the amendments. For the heads of centers, please note that you need to ensure that you have made the payment before the hour of midnight tonight because if you do not pay, the candidate will not be considered to be registered. Registration is only confirmed after payment, so please make sure you do make the payment before the hour of midnight tonight and you can pay using the flex pay option or you can pay through the bank as may be convenient for you. 
we want to encourage anybody out there who would like to do the UCE examination um, for in the old curriculum is that the, 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 you have had an opportunity to register for transition examination so please in case you have not registered as yet and you have an opportunity to do you can register from any of the halls any of the centers you can go and register from any of the halls in, in any of the private halls operated by you need to register a candidates or you can go to a new school to any other secondary school as long as they can accommodate you however it should be before the hour of midnight tonight today's fact file and in today's fact file we're going to be looking at uh, Let's have a look at this. Muwanga Muhammad Chivumbi, born October 19, 1973, is a Ugandan economist, politician, and member of parliament for Uganda from Butambala. He is the chairperson of the Uganda Parliamentary Caucus. Chivumbi was born in Butambala district, central Uganda. He earned his first school living certificate from Gombe Primary School in 1986 and obtained Uganda Certificate of Education from Chibuli Secondary School in 1990. He studied for his Uganda Advanced Certificate of Education from 1990 to 1993 before enrolling in Makere University where he graduated with bachelor's degree in economics in 1998. In 2003, he earned an associate degree in democracy and development from the Uganda Matters University and a master from the Uganda Management Institute in 2004. Chifumbi was a member of parliament for Democratic Party before defecting to National Unity Platform. He was elected the chairperson of Buganda Parliamentary Caucus in the 11th parliament. Fact file for BTM News today. Well, we do have our international news now coming up next.